the universe, in all its infinite improbability, had a way of throwing the most curious of individuals together. Take, for instance, Jack, a human with a penchant for salvaging forgotten technologies from a long-gone era, a man who ran a small, cluttered stall at the Thraxian Bazaar, and who, at that very moment, was helping an alien princess, her daughter, and their slightly unnerving pet, escape a horde of bounty hunters with an unhealthy interest in their demise. Jack wiped the sweat from his brow, his knuckles still tingling from the recent skirmish. The bounty hunters had been relentless, appearing out of nowhere in the dusty alleyways of the bazaar. But Jack, ever resourceful, had managed to fend them off with a combination of quick thinking, faster reflexes, and a few well-placed kicks to places that even intergalactic bounty hunters found uncomfortable. He had to admit, the Princess Velixia stood beside him, her tall, graceful form clad in what was once a regal gown, now torn and singed from the battle. Her daughter Lyra clung tightly to her hand, her wide eyes reflecting a mixture of fear and awe. And then there was the pet, a creature that looked like a cross between a feline and a sentient marshmallow, with three eyes that blinked out of sync and three tails that seemed to have a mind of their own. Are you all right? Jack asked, his voice calm despite the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. Velixia nodded, her silver blonde hair shimmering under the dim lights of the alley. We are unharmed thanks to you, Jack, but I must ask, where in the galaxy did you learn to fight like that? You were quite impressive. Jack shrugged, a modest grin tugging at the corners of his lips, not wanting to mention his past, as it could complicate things more. Oh, you know, just picked it up here and there. You learn a few things when you're dealing with the kind of clientele I get at the bazaar. Everyone's looking for something, and sometimes they're not too picky about how they get it. Velixia raised an eyebrow, clearly intrigued but not entirely convinced. Well, wherever you learned, it seems the bounty hunters will be back, and likely in greater numbers. We need to find a place to hide. Jack nodded, glancing around the alley. The bazaar was no place to be caught unawares, especially not with those bounty hunters on their tail. But Jack had a plan. He always had a plan. I've got just the place. It's a bit out of the way, but it'll keep you safe until we figure out our next move. Lead the way, Velixia said, her tone resolute. Jack motioned for them to follow, and the small, motley group made their way through the twisting back streets of the bazaar, dodging the occasional curious glance from vendors and patrons alike. The bazaar was a labyrinth of stalls, ships, and makeshift structures, a place where anything could be bought or sold, and where secrets were traded like currency. They reached a nondescript hatch, hidden behind a stack of rusted starship parts. Jack knelt down, tapping a seemingly random sequence on an old keypad. The hatch creaked open, revealing a narrow staircase descending into darkness. Watch your step! Jack said, leading the way down into the bowels of his hidden sanctuary. As they descended, the air grew cooler, and the hum of ancient machinery echoed through the narrow passage. The staircase led to a large underground chamber, dimly lit by flickering overhead lights. The walls were lined with shelves and crates, filled with all manner of gadgets, weapons, and relics from a bygone era. It was a treasure trove of forgotten technology, salvaged from the remnants of the Galactic Federation. Welcome to my humble abode, Jack said with a flourish, though it was clear from the cluttered state of the place that the term humble was a bit generous. Lyra's eyes lit up as she took in the sight, her fear momentarily forgotten. She darted from one shelf to another, admiring the various trinkets and gadgets with the wide-eyed wonder of a child in a candy store. The pet creature, meanwhile, sniffed around curiously, eventually curling up on Jack's favorite chair, a battered old recliner that had seen better days. Hey, that's my chair, Jack protested half-heartedly, but the creature merely blinked at him with its three eyes, its expression one of smug satisfaction. Asterisk, asterisk, continued. Asterisk, the princess, the pet, and the peculiar plan. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. 
Velixia, however, was focused on the more pressing matter at hand. This place, it's remarkable, she said, her voice tinged with both surprise and admiration as she surveyed the room. Is all of this operational? Jack scratched the back of his head, modestly deflecting the compliment. Well, operational might be a strong word for some of it, but yeah, most of it works. At least I think it does. I've been tinkering with this stuff for years, could never bring myself to part with any of it. You never know when an ancient plasma cannon or a cloaking shield generator might come in handy. Velixia nodded, a thoughtful expression crossing her face. It's a good thing you didn't. This might be exactly what we need. Jack motioned toward a wall, where a series of monitors flickered to life, displaying various feeds from the perimeter sensors he'd rigged up around the bazaar. We've got eyes on every angle. If anyone so much as sneezes near this place, we'll know about it. He pointed at a particularly grainy feed that showed the bounty hunter gang regrouping in a nearby alley. Looks like they're already on the move again. We've bought ourselves a bit of time, but not much. Velixia's gaze sharpened as she studied the monitor. These bounty hunters, they won't stop until they have what they want. But why me? Why now? Surely there are easier targets for them to pursue. Jack glanced at her, his expression serious. That's the million credit question, isn't it? Bounty this big, it's got to be personal. Someone's put a lot of resources into getting you, and they're not going to stop until they've either succeeded or they're out of options. He paused, considering his next words carefully. Do you have any idea who might be behind this? Velixia hesitated, her eyes clouding with uncertainty. There are many possibilities. My family has ruled the Illyrian throne worlds for centuries. We've made enemies, some powerful, others petty. But to place a bounty like this, it would have to be someone with significant influence and resources. Jack frowned, thinking, someone with influence and resources doesn't exactly narrow it down, but it's a start. We'll need to figure out who's behind this if we're going to have any chance of stopping them. Lyra, who had been quietly exploring the bunker with her pet, suddenly interrupted the conversation. Mr. Jack, what's this? She held up a small glass orb that shimmered with an iridescent light. Jack's eyes widened in recognition. Ah, that's a stasis orb. Be careful with that. If you activate it, it'll freeze whatever's inside in time for about a minute. Handy in a pinch, but not something you want to accidentally drop. Lyra's eyes widened, and she quickly but carefully placed the orb back on the shelf. Wow, you have so many amazing things here. It's like a museum. Jack chuckled though he couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. This place was a museum, a museum of lost causes, forgotten battles, and the remnants of a galaxy that had long since moved on. But for now, it was also their best chance at survival. The pet, having settled itself comfortably in Jack's chair, let out a contented purr that resonated through the room. Jack rolled his eyes but couldn't suppress a smile. Looks like your pet's made itself at home. Velixia smiled softly, her regal demeanor momentarily giving way to a more maternal warmth. Mr. Fluffles has a way of finding the most comfortable spot in any room. I'm afraid your chair may be occupied for the duration of our stay. Jack sighed in mock resignation. Great, first the galaxy goes to hell, and now I've lost my favorite chair. Velixia's smile turned more serious. Jack, you've already done so much for us. I'm not sure how we can ever repay you. Jack waved off the sentiment. Don't worry about it. I'm not in this for the credits, or whatever passes for currency where you're from. Besides, I couldn't just leave you out there with those bounty hunters breathing down your necks. I've got a bit of a soft spot for damsels in distress, I suppose. Velixia gave him a long, searching look. You're a kind man, Jack but you're also clever. You must know that helping us puts you in great danger. Jack shrugged. Danger's part of the job description. Besides, I've been in worse scrapes, and I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. 
As Jack leaned back against one of his many cluttered workbenches, he couldn't help but feel a peculiar sense of satisfaction. It wasn't every day that one managed to rescue a royal princess, her daughter, and their peculiar pet from a horde of bloodthirsty bounty hunters. Not that he had a habit of keeping track of such things. He was far too busy keeping track of the dust bunnies multiplying under his workbench. Princess Velixia, on the other hand, was far from relaxed. She was moving through the bunker with the grace of someone who had spent their life navigating the corridors of power. Yet there was an undercurrent of tension in her every step. She paused before a shelf that held a collection of small, shimmering orbs, each one glowing faintly with a different hue. One orb in particular caught her eye, a deep blue sphere nestled among the others, almost as if it were trying not to be noticed. Velixia's hand hovered over it for a moment before she deftly plucked it from its resting place and slipped it into the folds of her robe. She cast a quick glance at Jack, who was too busy tinkering with a half-disassembled droid to notice her little act of larceny. That's going to come in handy, she whispered to herself, her lips curling into a barely perceptible smile. As she did not want to tell Jack, how she recognized the orb, something that had been in her family for eons, thought to be a lost myth, turns up in a human's bunker of all places. Meanwhile, Jack was muttering to himself something about never confine the blasted hydrospanner when you need it, as he rummaged through a drawer filled with what looked like the remains of several dozen broken gadgets. Lyra, oblivious to her mother's secretive act, was busy examining a dusty hollow projector that was displaying a slightly flickering image of a long-forgotten battle between the Galactic Federation and a horde of space pirates. The cat-like creature, now fully comfortable in Jack's chair, stretched lazily and yawned, as if to say, I've seen more exciting things in my sleep. Just as Jack located the elusive hydrospanner, an ancient tool that had seen better days but still held together through sheer stubbornness, the bunker's perimeter sensors began to emit a high-pitched whine, followed by a series of flashing red lights. Well, that's not good, Jack said, his voice tinged with an exasperation that suggested this sort of thing happened more often than he liked. Valixia's eyes narrowed. What is it? Trouble. Jack replied, dropping the hydro spanner and rushing over to a wall-mounted console. He tapped a few buttons and a grainy image appeared on the screen, a group of heavily armed bounty hunters, far too close for comfort, moving with the kind of purpose that suggested they knew exactly where they were going. They found us, Velixia said, her voice calm but with an edge of urgency. That they have! Jack muttered, his fingers flying over the console as he activated the bunker's defences. But how? This place isn't on any map. It's not even on the maps that don't exist. It's almost as if they have the blueprints, Velixia mused, her voice low. Blueprints from the days of the Galactic Federation. Jack froze for a moment, then turned to look at her. You don't think... Someone knows your past, Velixia finished for him. Someone who has access to information that should have been lost to time. Jack's mind raced, trying to piece together the fragments of this increasingly convoluted puzzle. He had always prided himself on being a man of mystery, the kind of man who could disappear into the shadows of the galaxy without leaving a trace. Yet here he was, being hunted down with a precision that suggested someone had not only found the trail he thought he'd covered, but had also mapped it out in excruciating detail. Well, that's just dandy, Jack grumbled, yanking open a panel on the wall to reveal a series of switches. Looks like we're going to have to give these blokes a warm reception. He flipped the switches, and a series of mechanical clicks echoed through the bunker. A moment later, the sound of hidden battle drones powering up filled the air, their systems coming online with a series of ominous hums. Lyra's eyes lit up with excitement as the drones rose from their concealed compartments, their weaponry gleaming in the dim light. Are those... Old Federation battle drones, Jack confirmed, a hint of pride creeping into his voice. 
Found them in a scrap heap a few years back. Took a bit of work to get them running, but they should be enough to hold off those bounty hunters for a while. Felixia nodded, her mind already working through the next steps. We need to figure out who's behind this. Someone with access to Federation blueprints is no ordinary enemy. Got that right, Jack said with a cautioned tone. Jack's mind buzzed with half-formed theories as the sound of the drone's activation filled the bunker. He couldn't quite shake the feeling that this situation was sliding out of his control, which was not a feeling he enjoyed. Especially not when he was stuck underground with a princess, her daughter, and a cat-like creature that had somehow managed to commandeer his favourite chair. Outside, the perimeter sensors continued their frantic beeping, each one indicating the steady approach of the bounty hunters. Jack's fingers danced over the console, bringing up a series of maps, schematics, and defense protocols. He could see the bounty hunters advancing, their movements eerily precise, as if they had rehearsed this very scenario a thousand times. They're too organized, Jack muttered, more to himself than to anyone else. Bounty hunters don't usually work like this. They're more of the kick down the door and shoot first, ask questions, never type. Felixia stood beside him, her violet eyes scanning the screen with a sharpness that betrayed her royal upbringing. Whoever is behind this wants us alive, or at least they want me alive. The bounty hunters might not care, but their employer does. Jack's eyes narrowed as he considered her words. If they've got Federation blueprints, they might have access to old military protocols too. That would explain why they're moving in such a coordinated way. Lyra, who had been quietly observing the drones with a mix of awe and excitement, suddenly spoke up. What if they're not just after the bounty? What if they want something else, something we have? Jack and Valixia exchanged a glance, both of them clearly considering the possibility. Jack scratched his chin, his mind working overtime. The only thing I can think of that's valuable enough to warrant this kind of operation would be... The stasis orb, Valixia finished, her voice low. Jack's eyes widened. The what now? The stasis orb, Valixia repeated, her hand instinctively brushing against the hidden pocket in her robe where she had placed the blue orb earlier. It's an ancient piece of technology, far older than the Federation. It has the power to freeze time within a localized area, effectively putting anything inside in stasis. Jack blinked. And you just happen to have one of those lying around? Felixia gave him a look that was somewhere between exasperation and amusement. It wasn't exactly just laying around, like some cereal box toy. I could not believe my eyes when I spotted it. I have only seen pictures of it from my culture's fairy tales. It's been in my family for generations. If it falls into the wrong hands, and you had it in your bunker all this time. Right. So you're telling me that I had something that valuable right under my nose this whole time, Jack interrupted, already feeling the weight of the situation pressing down on him. So we've got a relic that can stop time, a bunch of bounty hunters who are after it, and someone pulling their strings who knows more about my hideout than I do. Perfect. The drones had finished their activation sequence and were now hovering silently, weapons at the ready. Jack could see the bounty hunters closing in on the bunker's entrance, their movements still chillingly precise. All right, Jack said, clapping his hands together with a forced cheerfulness that didn't quite reach his eyes. Time to make these bounty hunters regret taking this job. He activated the bunker's external defenses, and immediately a series of hidden turrets popped out of the ground around the perimeter. They began firing at the advancing bounty hunters, forcing them to take cover. The drones, meanwhile, hovered near the entrance, ready to engage any intruders who made it past the turrets. Valixia watched the action unfold on the screen, her expression unreadable. This will buy us time, but we can't stay here forever. Eventually, they'll find a way in. Jack nodded, his mind already racing through possible escape plans. 
We need to figure out who's behind this and why they're so desperate to get their hands on that stasis orb. If we can figure that out, we might be able to turn the tables on them. Lyra spoke up again, her voice soft but insistent. What if we use the stasis orb just for a little while to buy us more time? Velixia shook her head. The orb is too dangerous to use lightly. If we activate it, we could end up trapping ourselves in stasis indefinitely. It's a last resort, not a solution. Jack, however, was already considering the idea. What if we use it as a decoy? We could rig it to activate if anyone gets too close. It might not stop them permanently, but it could slow them down enough for us to make our escape. Velixia considered this, her eyes narrowing thoughtfully. It's risky, but it could work. We'd need to time it perfectly, if I remember correctly. From the fairly tale, we might not even have to rig, apparently. Its energy source is infinite and can be used as weapon, like a beam of time energy. Jack grinned, his earlier anxiety giving way to the thrill of a plan coming together. You're going to base that off a children's fairy tale. I guess they always have a happy ending. This should work out. Well, most fairy tales end well. Timing's my specialty. Well, that and finding myself a nice piece of hidden junk to salvage.